for sustainable growth over longer periods rather than fight on a day-to-day -day basis. So what are those elements which we thought are essential? I think fundamental to a sustainable economic growth will be a stable macroeconomic environment with low inflation, with low or, or you know, absolutely no fiscal deficit, a stable currency, high saving rates, high investment to GDP ratios. This will give you a stable environment in which people would like to invest for a longer period of time and hence create you know, jobs. But linchpin in our present situation for macroeconomic stability to come into, into uh, Pakistan is the tax reforms. The government sooner or later will have to balance its books. It cannot, you know, sustain growth over a long period of time with a 9% tax-to-GDP ratio. We'll have to increase the taxes or tax-to-GDP from present 9% to 15 in 5 years and 20 in 10 years. And this obviously means to start with a statement which we have to follow that there will be no sacred cows. Everybody who has income will have to pay taxes, whether they are the agriculturists, retailers, professionals, or, you know, employees or businessmen. Everybody who has income over 300,000 rupees will have to pay taxes. We'll have to remove the policy loopholes and obviously the policy loopholes even today exist, despite, you know, my trying, you know, to remove a few of them, which means agriculture tax will have to be collected, which means real uh, capital gains on real estate, you know, uh, will have to be, you know, taxed, which means, you know, although we have, you know, the tax in place on capital gains in the stock market, but we are not collecting, will have to be done. And whatever is left, you know, in the services sector which is not being taxed will have to be included. So those are on the direct taxation side and, you know, on the indirect tax taxation, some of the policy loopholes. Now, improve the, the taxes, the collection of taxes. We obviously, on the indirect tax sector, will have to go towards the value addition. Because today, we are collecting around 3.5 to 4 percent as our sales tax, and some of the countries even our neighborhood, they collect double of that. Sri Lanka does around 7 percent and Turkey does 10 percent. So why is it that we cannot just do 7 or 10 percent? So I think this, this needs political will. And I was talking to Abdullah Yusuf Saab and he, he obviously is, is, is the person who has just done a lot for, uh, you know, uh, the taxation in this country. And he says, number one prerequisite is political will. And unless we do not have the political will, this will not happen. We also need to improve the tax administration, tax, uh, you know, implementation and, and collection. We all know, the, you know, what are the, you know, the problems over there. But if we can improve, we can turn around institutions like Habib Bank, United Bank and others, we can, you know, we can also do, you know, turn around, you know, institutions like FBR. But here there is another area which, you know, people, you know, neglect. And that is the responsibility of the provinces to collect taxes. You'll be very surprised that today, and I'm sure you know it, you know, you know it better than me, that it is less than 1% of our GDP. And countries like Turkey and Brazil, they collect 10 or 15% through the provinces. So why is it that we just only collect 0.65%? Because the provinces feel very comfortable. And with the new NFC, they're feeling even more comfortable. The second thing where we will probably create more fiscal space, more resource for the government, is that we must do something with these public sector enterprises. 
the hemorrhaging public sector enterprises which actually lose today 2% of our GDP, 400 billion rupees, for no rhyme or reason. So I think our policy should be that government has no business doing business. We must form a holding company and basically dovetail all these companies under that, including the profit-making companies like OGDCL, PPL, PSO, Swiss Southern, Swiss Northern. Because if we keep them with the government, the chances are in five years' time they will also start losing money. So I think, you know, after going through all the, you see, the, the uh, uh, you know, previous history, I mean, I was the chairman of the uh, Cabinet Committee on Restructuring of these Enterprises, realized if they remain with the ministries, they will neither be privatized nor, that they, nor they will be turned around. So we have to have a holding company with private sector board, and these things should be given to them for turnaround and sale of strategic you know, uh, interest. Because let me tell you what is the upside. Today we lose 2% of GDP there. We could be earning 2 to 3% GDP in 5 to 10 years' time. You must remember that 1996, Habib Bank lost around 10 billion rupees a year. Today it makes 25 billion rupees a year. Maybe it's only 15 years, but look at the turnaround. If the same thing is done with PIA, steel mill, the PEPCOs, and everybody else, and the railways, we probably are saying we, we could in 10 years' time have a addition to our GDP of around 4 to 5 percent. And the third element on, on this is targeting subsidies. We basically give subsidies to everybody because we do not know how we can target subsidies to where, it belong, where, where they belong. Why the hell should everybody get fuel uh, or, or, or electricity subsidy? So I think, you know, we have started doing a good thing. We have started creating a highway through the help of World Bank, whereby all the households of this country are getting assessed on their income levels, and we'll create a highway which will say these are the households which earn less than, you know, X amount. They could be given cards, and we could give them fuel subsidy, you know, subsistence subsidy, and electricity subsidy, but only to those households which are below the poverty line and remove everything else from, you know, uh, for, for, for all the others. That will probably become a very efficient, you know, 